Cloud Code was just updated and some of the updates are very cool and very valuable. So I decided to record this short video for you guys going over uh, all the updates. This is something that I often do. I just go to the change log and check out what are the recent updates published by different teams in products that I like following. Specifically in this case, uh, you have uh, the change log of Cloud Code here is the GitHub repository. These are uh, kind of the latest uh, versions, uh, 2.0.65 and 2.0.64. Um, some of it is more like small nuances and tweaks that I'm not going to um, discuss. And some of it is slightly more interesting and useful. So I wanted to share it with you guys. So let's go over uh, the interesting stuff in my opinion. So first of all, this is more of like a UX UI improvement. So you can very easily switch between models while writing the prompt. So Alt P and it just allows you to switch the model. I'm going heavy lately on Opus 4.5. I don't even use the other models and you can use uh, stats uh, this command in order to see what models are you using. As you can see here, my favorite model is obviously Opus 4.5, total tokens used, sessions, current streak, active date, etc. So this is just a cool um, cool command, which isn't new, I believe. Um, okay, so the ability to add props. The second one is made auto-compacting instant. So this is very important, and obviously it's related to context management and context engineering. So as you guys know, or you don't know, there are different types of memories in a uh, cloud and you need to manage them if you want the, con the context to be precise and the output to, to be precise. So there is this uh, breakdown in the cloud uh, code docs regarding different memory types. So I'm going to go over this very quickly. So the first memory type is the enterprise policy, which uh, sits in different locations uh, locally. And the purpose of this uh, memory is uh, to like organization wide instructions managed by the IT or the DevOps. So example of use cases of company coding standards, security, security policies, compliance requirements, etc. And it is shared with all the users in the, in the organization. Next we have the project memory, which is a team shared instructions for the project. It contains the project architecture, coding standards, common workflows, etc. Beyond this, we have the project rules, which is going to be the cloud uh, code rules, which is a modular topic specific project instructions, use cases or language specific guidelines, testing conventions, API standards, etc. We have the user memory, which is contains personal preferences for all projects. And we also have the personal level project memory, which is going to be local. And each type of, of these memories has a, like a different purpose, as you saw, and sits in a different place. And once you start really um, creating projects at scale with cloud code, you need to be able to manage a context efficiently and effectively. So you must understand the distinction between all these uh, memories. And now regarding the things that I wanted to, to discuss is the Anthropic added a uh, auto compacting instant, uh, which basically automatically keeps on uh, uploading the memory. And this is important because um, obviously you still have the capability to compact, but it also keeps on compacting all the time, which kind of keeps uh, the, the context refreshed and updated. Now, one thing related to the compacting is this is something that I haven't used uh, until I found out about it uh, a few days ago. So we can uh, compact context on demand by writing compact, which will basically summarize the conversation. But, um, and this is the nuance, which is very useful. If we want to compact um, and focus on a certain aspect, for example, <coughs> let me give you an example. Um, let's say we're writing a front end and we want to focus on the high level copywriting of the front end. But in the whole conversation, in the whole context, we have a lot of nuances regarding um, the design or regarding 
a button that we had issues implementing and we fixed it. So um, if we just compact the conversation without providing specific instructions about what is important for us, there is a very, yeah, I wouldn't say a very high likelihood, but it is likely that the compact uh, process and the summary of the conversation won't be focused on what necessarily we wanted. For example, like I said, the going back and forth regarding the button issue, because let's say the button issue um, took like 80% of the conversation, which isn't good for us. What we can do, we can compact with specific instructions. So instead of saying, instead of just compacting, we can say compact with focus on the high level structure of what I want from this front end page. So this is very valuable because basically then we control the context, allows us to really make the most out of the, or out of cloud code and really do some context and engineering. Uh, one thing related to this, and this is also something that I kind of find out when I was reading in the documentation. So we obviously have the context, which is going to be updated automatically or whenever we compact, but we also have the to-do list. And the to-do list in opposing to the whole conversation is persistent in memory. What does that mean? If you create a to-do list, basically when you give a cloud code, a list of tasks to execute, usually it's going to create a to-do list. And um, the context management system of cloud code is going to handle uh, the to-do list separately. And basically it's going to make sure that the context that is in the to-do list is going to be persistent. So if you have a to-do list, even, even after you compact uh, and you condense the conversation, the to-do list is going to stay persistent and it's going to stay exactly the same as it was before. Why is this so important? Because this allows you basically to make sure that the context that you really want is going to be persistent. So this is wh why I, whenever I'm using cloud code, I often tell it explicitly, create a scratch pad or create a to-do list with the following tasks. So it's one thing to ask it, um, please create an HTML, um, that will contain a landing page for a uh, cloud code course, break it down into different phases, write the hero banner, then the testimonials, then write uh, the contact us form, and at the bottom write uh, like a disclaimer. So this is one alternative and we are not quite sure if a uh, cloud code is going to break it down into different tasks. Uh, so this is why usually what I would do, I would just say create a scratch pad or create a to-do list and um, do this one by one. Or alternatively, if you want to spin multiple agents, you can do also use uh, that in the prompt. Create multiple agents. Each agent should, bo should do like one element. Let me uh, pause this and create a scratch pad for this task and break it down into uh, atom levels. So we go step by step without forgetting anything. So this is what, what I would do. Okay, moving onwards, we discussed uh, auto compacting, we discussed memories, and we, I showed you the stats. We discussed the compact with uh, focus and we discussed the importance of the to-do. The last thing which is pretty exciting, uh, I haven't tested it uh, thoroughly, but it is very interesting. The fact that we can add agents and bash commands, uh, I mean, this isn't new, but the, the fact that they can run asynchronously and send messages to wake up the main agent. So this is actually very valuable because in opposing to before, they ran synchronously and they didn't update the main agent. This time we can ask a uh, cloud code to spin new agents or run bash commands. And whenever they finish um, executing while we keep on working on cloud code, it will wake up the main agent and notify it, which is very, very valuable. Let's see the status of this. Okay, so as you can see, it wrote a scratch pad. It created the file um, so, oh, it, created like an overkill of atomic task maybe. I shouldn't have asked for the atomic task, but more of like um, just a simple to-do list. Anyway, 
this is going to stay persistent because it, it's a file and we just make we can make it a point uh, add to the cloud.md file to make it a point that we will keep on updating uh, the scratchpad based on the progress um, let me see if I should now spin five different agents each one or no, seven different agents each one should be in, in charge of uh, one of the portions of the project and run them simultaneously let's see I don't think that we will wait until this will end but uh, the main idea is this is going to spin up seven new agents and they are going to work asynchronously and just notify us as soon as um, they have ended the work as you can see here we can use control alt to expand and we have all of these agents starting to work and we get data about the agents how many tools they've used and um, the token etc but nothing new here the main addition is the fact that they run asynchronously that's it for today guys just wanted to share with you a very very short uh, and brief video about the new updates of cloud code which in my opinion is the most powerful ai coding assistant out there especially these days uh, since opus 4.5 was released it's just mind-blowing how precise and accurate and fast this model is if you have any questions or suggestions let me know leave them in the comment section obviously and until next time keep on automating